Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. All right. We're here. We did it. Uh, welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I am the Couch Warrior. And it is uh, Tuesday. Not only is it Tuesday, but it is Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Um, and tonight is a creates episode we are going to have some fun tonight working in ck i think it's well working in ck is a mixed bag it can be fun it can be bananas uh but it's always creative and interesting hopefully uh, if things work out for us tonight we shall see we are going to pick up where we left off in our last create session and uh we're going to take the uh, texture that we had created for Vander Sprint Camp, which we started in the last in the last creates episode, and we're going to turn it into a unique object. So, if you remember, uh, let's just catch up. Last time around, what we did is we uh, we spent some time kind of learning how the contents of BSA files are structured. We extracted a BSA file. We located uh, the item that we were looking for, we isolated its texture, and then we retextured that item, and then packaged it up and saved it out as a replacer mod. Now, what that mod did that we created last week is it basically retextured um, all of the caps in Skyrim so that they would be exactly like Vander's. That is a replacer. So when you when you hear somebody talking on Nexus or whatever about a replacer mod, that's what that is. We're, we're taking something from the game and we're reskinning all of them. What we're going to do tonight is we are going to create a unique cap uh, so that Vander is the only one who possesses this cap. Uh, this is going to require us to crap, crack open some creation kit and uh, play around with that a little bit. Now, uh, tonight I'm working in uh, the special edition version of creation kit. But the procedure is going to be basically the same regardless uh, uh, whether it's Legacy or, or Special Edition. So that is a plan. We're going to do that. I don't know how long it's going to take. We're going to, uh, we're going to get it set up. Uh, once we've got it set up, we will package it up just like we did last time. Uh, we'll go through kind of the install and plug-in process so you kind of have a complete picture of how this all works. Uh, and then we'll take a short break. And then after that, we're going to go in and do some gameplay. And tonight, because I've got the profile up and running and because we're working on it, we're going to play some Vander. I've got a new mod that I created um, myself that I have installed that we're going to talk about a little bit and we're going to play around with in-game. That should be pretty fun, I think. So welcome, everybody. I see EJ. I see Gemma. I see Mila. I see the wind. I see a very large sloth. I don't know how that got in here. Uh, I see Demorg. I see uh, uh, Za or Zay mods. I don't know. You Zay or Za. Um, either way, I see you. And we've got got a pretty good crowd tonight. So we're gonna get going here. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna go dark on the camera. Okay. So I guess uh, one of the there are several ways in which. Creation Kit for Special Edition is different. Um, the interface looks a little bit different. Pizza, za mods, got it. Um, but for, for the most part, the, the differences are not differences that you're likely to encounter unless you are creating very specific mods. Um, one of the things that I have run into recently is um, I have discovered that there are there is a single key file that is present in the legacy version of Creation Kit that <clears throat> allows you to create lip files. In other words, it allows you to take a wave file you've recorded of a character's voice and generate a lip file, which makes the character's mouth animate to whatever is being spoken in the wave file. That file is simply missing from the special edition version of Creation Kit. And so it is actually impossible to create a voiced follower 
in the special edition version of Creation Kit if you're going to do a custom voice. This is something that I just figured out. Um, so you have to create them in the legacy version and then port them over. It's it's little things like that um, that I think you, you run into during the course of creating a mod and then you go out and research it and then you find, you know, some thread somewhere that, you know, where people have been complaining about it for months, you didn't know about it. Uh, some of these things are, are just really... Uh, frustrating when you encounter them. The other thing I ran into the other day was I was trying to uh, convert some animations from Legacy uh, into Special Edition, and there was a key Havoc file missing that would not allow me to generate or convert the animations. Um, why it's missing, I don't know. If you go out to Havoc and try to download it, they don't offer it anymore, and you end up doing things like fishing around, trying to figure out where the hell this file is and how you're going to get your hands on it. But what it does is stuff like that has, it, it, it explains some of the things that we see going on on Nexus, for example. It explains why we don't have more voiced followers, for example, because uh, there are some things that take an already complicated process of making a voiced follower and make it even more complicated. Um, I think that's why we haven't been seeing recently. I mean, initially when the game came out, there were a lot of animation mods that were converted. Now we're seeing fewer animation mods because people are running up against this havoc issue, would be my guess. Uh, so... I've had two instances in the last week and a half where I have attempted to create something and was blocked for whatever reason because some key component of Creation Kit was missing that I needed. So I have since gone back and loaded the old version of the game. So I've got both versions of the game loaded on my system. I've got both versions of Creation Kit loaded on my system. It is um, a huge pain in the butt, but it is necessary. So anyway... That is a quick and dirty explanation for, uh, I, I guess what I would say is some deficiencies in Creation Kit for Special Edition, but deficiencies that will typically only affect you if you're trying to do very, very specific things. They're the kinds of things where, depending on the kinds of mods you're creating, you may never encounter these blocks. Um, so it just so happens I encountered them both in a week and a half. Okay. So here we are. We're in Creation Kit. Now, one of the things that uh, you have to do with Creation Kit for a special edition is you have to launch it from the Bethesda launcher. You can't just launch it by itself like the old version. So you got to have the Bethesda launcher, as far as I know. There's probably some kind of workaround for this. Um, I'm not interested in pursuing it. It's easy enough to fire up the launcher and just hit play. All right. So the first thing that we got to think about here is... We have to consider the resources that are going to be required for our mod. Now, we require very few resources for our mod. Everything that we need for the mod that we're about to create is going to come uh, directly from um, vanilla Skyrim. So the first thing we do when we load Creation Kit, now this, this is kind of interesting. I don't know how many of you have played with Creation Kit. But this window is uh, the render window. This is when we render environments, when we want to go into environments and do things like landscaping, uh, interior decorating, placement of objects in the world, you use the render window. Uh, the cell view, this is basically kind of a search and selection tool. It allows you to find the cell that you're looking for, and once you've found that cell and you select it, it loads in the render window. Now, the work that we're doing tonight is not going to require either one of these windows. We're going to be working almost exclusively here in the object window and in the specific windows that will pop up for the items that we're going to create. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is tell Creation Kit what we need it to load. Uh, and we do that by going over here to File and then selecting Data. All right. Now what we get here is a pop-up that is going to show me all the mods that I currently have installed that have an ESP file or an ESM file, okay? So things like retextures are not going to show up on this list um, if, it's, if it's just a straight-up retexture. If it's a retexture that requires 
an ESP file, then that ESP file will show up here. All right. What we really need is we need to make sure that we've got Skyrim ESM and update ESM. That's what we need. Now, for what we're doing, we don't need anything else here. Okay. And uh, this is something we're, we're probably going to encounter this window again later during testing. So there's other things that I can show you here uh, that'll make more sense later on when we reload our mod. But for now, we haven't created any mod. We're starting from scratch. So we're saying I need resources from Skyrim and I need resources from Update. At the very least, you're always going to select these two. Okay. Now, the other thing to remember here is you have to be careful about this too. Kind of think through what it is you're building. Because if I select Dawnguard here as a resource um, and then end up not needing anything from the Dawnguard DLC as part of my mod, I've got this hook into the Dawnguard DSM. It's a suddenly a dependency. It's a dependency that's hooked up to my mod but that I don't really need, and it creates overhead. It causes uh, Creation Kit to load more slowly, right, because it's got to load all those assets. Uh, so... Uh, think it through pretty carefully uh, what you need to start with. It is possible if I if I were to attach Dawn Guard here, I could go back after the fact and remove it. But it's just easier if if you can kind of figure out as much of that as possible prior to getting started. Okay. All right. So we've got our master selected. I'm going to click OK. Now this process is going to take a while. Creation Kit, when it initially loads, is just the shell. It's just the tool. It doesn't have any data. So now we're filling Creation Kit with all the data that we need in order to build the mod. And this will take a little while. Now, of course, the more resources I'm using here, the longer the load process is going to take. Um, in a moment here, it's going to ask us to confirm some things. Okay, when you get these warnings about master files, you always click yes to all. And we'll get multiples of those as it starts to initialize things. Just yes to all, yes to all, yes to all, or ignore. And they're nothing really to worry about. It's just standard operating procedure for getting the kit working. All right, we're getting there. Look at how, how hard it's thinking right now. Now, when I, I've created some mods that use resources from Hearthfire and Dawn Guard and Dragonborn and all this kind of stuff, and literally, while these things load, you could go make a sandwich and come back, and my machine's pretty fast. So there's a lot of data being passed in here. Just got to stick with it. This is a great time to, I don't know, plan what you're going to do. So there's some infrastructure that we're going to have to set up to make this work. Now, we already have the infrastructure established from our last session for the textures. We're going to have to create similar infrastructure for uh, the meshes that we're going to be using. But we're going to get into Creation Kit here first. We're going to get some things set up here so that we can take a look at uh, some clues within Creation Kit that are going to tell us where we need to look for the assets that we have to load, okay? So here we are in Creation Kit. Now, this menu over here in the object window, this is everything. This is basically all the assets that are in Skyrim and update.esm sorted into these various categories, all right? Now, in order for us to do this, what we want to do is we're going to create a unique cap. And if you remember, last time we had to crack open a BSA file, and inside there we what we discovered is that the cap that we were going to modify was considered clothing. It wasn't considered armor, and it was considered part of farm clothing. So the chances are very good that that's how that's going to be categorized here within the kit as well. So what I usually do is I start by clicking All, okay, and I'm just going to type in hat, all right? We're going to start to see matches come back, okay? 
Now we got a whole bunch of matches here, okay? But based on our previous work, we already have some clues here. Because if you remember, there was a there was a farm 01 and there was a farm 02. Now if I look at this, this looks about right. Farm 01, farm 02. All right. This looks like it might be what we're looking for. So what I would do in this case is I could preview these. Actually, these probably I can't. Yeah, these I can't preview. But what they do clue me in is that I can look for I can look for something like Farm 02. I, I think that was actually the hat that we ended up using. Farm 02. All right, now I've narrowed my list down quite a bit there. All right, now let's do this. We got, I'm going to double click on that guy and open it up. So, what I'm looking at now is this is called the armor add on file, okay? And we can see the ID up here, we can see the race. And then we can see kind of the body areas that it's meant to cover. All right, so on a biped, it's saying it's going to cover the hair, it's going to cover long hair, and it's going to cover ears. So uh, the way things are working mechanically in the game is when, when this stuff is set up properly, what happens is when the hat is put on the character's head, the game will remove anything underneath the hat that is unnecessary. So if you're playing an elf, it may remove the ears on the elf if the hat covers the ears. And this is so that you don't end up with a situation where the pointy ears are clipping through the side of the hat. Weird stuff like that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and this will show you over here all the races that it applies to. So this is a kind of a clue as to which races are able to wear this piece of armor. And this usually is accounting for things like the beast races where certain pieces of armor don't fit right. So beast races may be restricted from wearing certain kinds of armor or may have a special piece of armor like a helmet designed specifically to fit their head shape, something like that. But the more important thing here is we just need to confirm that this is actually the right hat. So what I'm going to do here is I'm looking at this model. I'm going to click Select. Now I can see this. Okay, look at there it is. And it's even got our texture on it, all right? So we know this is the item that we need right here. All right, so we're going to close this. So essentially, this is the record that we need. Now I'm going to right-click on this record, and I'm going to select Duplicate. And this is my duplicate item here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. I'm going to leave the AA, all right? But I'm going to add my own prefix. My prefix is always the same, always CWMOD, all right, in caps. And then I'm going to put um, sprint cap. All right, now once I've got that in, I'm going to hit Enter, all right? now. When it says uh, create a new object, no will rename this object. So I'm going to select no and then yes. All right. Now what that's done is it's created a new object, right? So we still have our farm hat like before, but now we've got this guy. And this one belongs to us. So we've got kind of the basics that we need here. All right. So hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Now, if we look down here, you can see, you can tell by these abbreviations that we've got an Argonian variant and we've got a Khajiit variant, stuff like that. This is where we start getting into variations on, you know, slight changes in the hat shape to accommodate um, heads of the beast races. So if we open up this Khajiit one, now you can see under the, uh, the races, Everything is blank here until we get down to Khajiit, Vampire, okay? So this one is kind of meant for Khajiit races specifically. So that's kind of how that works, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now we've made a change. Basically what's happening now is Creation Kit is waiting for us to save that change. It's saying, okay, you've made a change. 
to the game, and it wants to save this change with a different name. You can see the asterisk up here is telling us that there's data to be saved. So we're going to go to File, Save, and now this is where we're going to save our mod. And take a look at the file path here. You can see this is where it's going to dump this, right? It's going to dump this into Skyrim Special Edition, or if you're playing Legacy, it'll be Skyrim forward slash data, okay? And then I'm going to name this with my prefix also, CW mod. You can see how my other ones are popping up down there. You can see how I tend to label my stuff. And this is so it's all in the same place and so that I can always find it, stuff like that, okay? Uh, if you do it the same every single time, it makes using the creation kit so much easier later. So I'm going to call this, um, let's see, Vander Sprint Cap, okay? Save that. Okay, now our mod has been saved. Now the beauty of this deal, of course, is now that I have my update saved, okay, next time I load the kit, I can select all, and I can come up here and I can type CW mod, and just my file shows up right there, okay? So it makes it really easy. There are some mods that are going to give you a whole collection of different files to work with. Um, so having that prefix in front of all the custom stuff that you create is going to make everything pop up right there where you can access it all really easily. All right, so let's go back in here. Now what I want to look at next is this path. Close, farm close 02, mail, hat underscore one dot nif. So we need to do, that is our, that's the, the file path to our mesh, okay? We need to go out and find that mesh, all right? So this is going to clue us in as to where that thing is, all right? So we're going to cancel that. We're now done in Creation Kit. So I'm going to close it down. All right. Close that. All right. Now we're going to get to work finding our NIF file. And we're going to do a similar thing to what we did last time. Remember how we, we used um, this extractor to open a BSA file? We're going to do the same thing, except this time we're looking for the mesh. So we go into Skyrim Special Edition, Data. Now we're going to scroll all the way down till we come to the Skyrim default stuff, OK? We've got animations, interface, meshes, so I'm thinking it might be in mesh, meshes zero BSA. We'll just drag it over there and take a look. Remember, we're looking for clothing. Yeah, here we got clothes and farm clothes 02, mail, and there it is right there hat underscore one dot nif. That is what we need. So we're going to unselect everything here. We're going to go down and just get the hat we need. We don't need anything else here, just the hat. And we're going to extract this. And I'm going to dump this into the same spot where we created our work last time around. Uh, sprint cap right here. This is kind of my working file. So I'm going to put it in the in the sprint cap folder. We'll extract that. Now we should be done with this. All right. Now let's go out and just take a look and make sure it ended up where we needed it to. And it is. Look at that. OK. So here is the Photoshop file for the texture re we created two weeks ago. And here is where the texture is stored. That is our texture, right? OK. Now if we go back up here, we should see our mesh. The path should look very similar. And there is our mesh. All right. So. 
We've isolated a mesh. We have isolated our texture. We have created a record inside of CK. Now we got to hook all of this stuff together. So the next thing we're going to need is NIF scope. All right. And we, we have reviewed NIF scope before. This is what allows us to modify a mesh. And we've talked in the past about using NIF scope to remove objects from a mesh that we didn't want, which we, we can do in some cases. But in this case, we're not going to use it for that. We're going to use it to remap a texture. Okay? So now in NIF scope, there's our, this is the model for our hat. I'm going to select it. All right. Now, look at this now. This, this is kind of an important part. This, if anything's going to trip you up, it might be something like this, right? So what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm basically saying, okay, I'm, I'm selecting the whole object. Now I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to open this up. I'm going to go down to BS Lighting Shader Property. I'm going to select this. And now you can see what we can see here. This is the path. So let's extend this a little bit so you can see it a wee bit more of what's going on. So this is the full path to our texture. This one right here is the one I'm most concerned with. All right. So, and you can see it goes textures, clothes, farm clothes mail, okay? So this URL that we're seeing here, basically, it's like a URL, but that, that is the path to the Skyrim texture that covers this thing, okay? What we need to do is make sure that we've created a cap that uses a single unique texture, all right? So if we go in here and we take a look at our sprint cap, what we did is because we were creating a replacer, um... Our file path is exactly the same as the file path in vanilla Skyrim because we were creating a replacement, right? We're, we're overwriting it. Well, we want something that's completely unique. So what I'm going to do here, well, first of all, I've got some other mods that I've created. So to make things a little bit easier, let's go take a look at meshes, for example. If we go down here and we look at, there's a, I've created a directory here called CW Mods, and if I open that up, I've got other things going on in here. Um, I might be doing myself a big favor if I made it so that all the mods that I create use the same naming convention, right? You can see I've got one that's different down here. This is an experimental one, so I don't want it in with my other stuff, but once I get it finished, then I might move it in, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm creating a new folder, and I'm going to call it CW Mods. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mesh folder and drop it in there, my texture folder, and drop it in there. All right. So what I've done now is I've essentially created a unique file path because everything's kind of a layer deeper than it is in the vanilla game. Which means now, if I load this up now, it means that the texture that we created will be in-game, but Skyrim's vanilla farm hat 01 will not be mapped to it. It won't know how to find our texture. It'll use whatever the vanilla texture is. So by doing that, we have basically broken the replacer which is great. That's what we want to do. Okay? So, now we've got our folder structure, okay? Now what we're going to do is, this is the install file that we created last time. This is an old install file. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete it. We don't want to get confused about anything here. So, if I go back to data, and we scroll down here, remember when we created our mod, what did I call it? CW sprint cap something, right? CW mod uh, or vander sprint cap. There it is. CW mod hyphen vander sprint cap. This is the ESP file. 
that we created. So what I need is when we create a mod that contains an ESP file, it's going to have a set of several different things. It'll have an ESP file, and in the case of Armor, it'll have its, it, a texture, and it'll have a path to a mesh. Those three things working together. So what I want to do is create an install package for this that kind of links everything together. So I'm going to move this over in here. All right, so now everything is accounted for. We got our ESP file. And we got our uh, uniquely pathed mesh and texture. All right. Now, let's open up NIFScope again. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to reopen this mesh. All right. So I've selected the mesh. Go into BS Lighting Shader. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this file path. Okay. Now the only thing at this point that I need to change is I need to put in CW mods here. Okay. Remember we just created a we just created a file path that's one layer deeper than what's by default, okay? We're creating our own unique path, and what this does, of course, is it hides our custom mesh and our custom texture from the vanilla game so that we can create something completely unique, all right? Now, let's save that guy. All right, so let's run down the checklist. We've established our ESP file. We've got more to do with the ESP file, but we can't do it until we're done with our mesh and texture stuff, which we're working on now. We've got um, a finished texture, and now we've got a unique mesh, which is mapped to our unique texture. All right, so that's good. Let's save that, yes. Okay. I think I may not have saved that properly. I did not save that properly. Okay. Let me save this now. Save. All right. Now we close it. All right. So that part is done. Now let's go back up to the top level here of our work folder. Now I'm going to create an install package. And the install package, where we create this exactly the same way as we did two weeks ago. CW mod. Vander. Sprint. Cap. And that is just a .zip file. OK. Now, this time, instead of just putting in the path to the texture, we put all this stuff in. So we drop this guy in, and we drop that guy in. OK. So if we double check. Yep, we got our ESP file, and we got our folder path to our unique stuff. All right, so we're good to go there. Now, next thing to do is I'm going to get this loaded up. So if we were to, I mean, I'm just looking at Nexus Mod Manager right now, obviously. If I come over here and I take a look at my plugins, you can see there's already a plugin here called VanderSprintCap.esp. Um, this is the one that was created when we did our save from Creation Kit. All right, so we've got this ESP file sitting here because um, Nexus Mod Manager obviously is is looking at our Skyrim data folder, right? And so it sees it and it just is reporting back that hey, there's something here. Uh, but if we come over here, we don't see anything here. It's not registered as a plugin because there's no install package for it. Essentially, what the plugin is, right, is not only does it install this stuff, but it, it is saving this zip file, our install package, to some other location. So when we say, please reinstall this mod, it goes back out and it reinstalls from whatever install package it has archived. That's essentially 
what the mod is. So we're going to go ahead and install our mod now. Okay, uh, sprint cap. And then here is the zip file that we just created. Select that. All right, and we've got it right here. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to activate that. All right, so it's all activated. Now I'm going to go over to plugins and just double check. There it is. And it's not it, you know, it's it's been checked, so it's actually activated. Now I'm going to reposition it. I've got to move it down the list a little bit because I need realistic water and some other stuff to load after everything else. Okay, so now I've got it properly positioned where I want to. Now I'm not going to load the game yet because we still need to do more work on this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to Creation Kit. We're going to launch the kit again. So what we've just done is we started out in Creation Kit by creating our entry there so that we could see what the file path was to the mesh that we needed to look for. All right, that helped us out. Now we've gone and organized our assets, and we put it all back in. Got everything in there. Now we're going to go to Data again like we did before. Okay, This time we're going to load the things we need Skyrim and update just like before but now we've got this mod that we're working on vandersprintcap.esp we're going to select this and then we're going to select select set as active file what this means is that once the creation kit has loaded up when we hit the save button it's going to be saving our changes back to vandersprintcap.esp that's what we want we want it to save back to there, okay? I'm going to click OK. Now we sit and wait, go have a sandwich, whatever it is, and we wait for it to load. We're getting there. It's going to happen. Just you wait and see. <sighs> there have been reports that the special edition version of Creation Kit is slower than the legacy version, and I would like to... Uh, I totally concur with that. Okay, now we're back in. Now, remember, we created a a prefix before because we're super smart people. CW mod sprint cap AA. Okay. Now the AA is an interesting thing. Because this is a piece of clothing, there's really only one file reference in Creation Kit for it. However, if it's a piece of armor, if it's an item that qualifies as a piece of armor, it will have two entries. It will have an armor add-on file like this, and then there will be another file that is attached to it or is associated with it that has the same name usually without the AA, and the two of those things together make a piece of armor. The armor add-on here 
is telling it, okay, this is the mesh that you use, and this is, you know, this is what it applies to on the body, and this is the races that can use it. In the case of Armor, the other file that you would see associated with this would contain all the information around how powerful is the armor, what is it made of, what are the recipes and the ingredients that you need to create it, um, is it enchanted, uh, all that kind of stuff. That That is a, a piece of data that has all the information the game needs to know in order to use it uh, to affect the stats in the game. All right, Because this is a piece of clothing, that stuff doesn't apply, so we just get the one armor add-on file all right simpler all right so we know that this we know that this file path is uh Fukakta right now we got to fix this okay so if we go in here select this now we're going to change this up all right edit cw mods ooh did it not install or did it it mm, should have. Oh, I'm in meshes, though. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be in meshes, though, right? Let's go look at meshes quick. There's no other meshes here. Well, this happens sometimes, though. It'll be the first time I've seen that happen. Uh, let me think here. I don't think I can... Oh. <laughs> yeah. I know what I did there. Okay. I gotta go up a level. That is why. There we go. Meshes, clothes, farm clothes, hat. Okay. And it's saying invalid directory. It doesn't like my file path. That is because I did the thing wrong with the other thing. Yeah, I got to redo that. Let's redo it. Let's do it right. Damn it. Okay, so I need to tear this apart. Let's open this, better yet. Well, yeah, this is fine. Let's take this, cut it, go back here to our root, paste. Okay, so here's what I did wrong. So let's get rid of that. I do need to, I do need to create a unique directory, but I made the mistake of putting them both in the same directory. Each one of these needs its own. So what I would do here is I would go into meshes. I would create a CW mods here. All right. Come in here. Okay, so let's let's review that real quick, okay? So at the top level, I need to have meshes and textures. If I'm going to make the path unique, it's got to be down in here, okay? So now we have one more step in here, all right? But that also means, of course, that I have to remap my texture. So let's do that real quick. We know what we're doing on this part of it for the most part, don't we? There we go. All right, so we got to fix this piece. Otherwise, this will still be messed up. All right. So at the top level, it's got to be it's got to be textures, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm creating another level here. CW mods right there. All right. That makes more sense. Save that. All right, and we don't need to worry about this down here. We're still going to get this resource um, from the vanilla game, so I'm going to leave that path the same. All I need to really be worried about is this here, this piece. Okay? 
Now back up to the top level. Of course, that means that I'm going to have to redo this install. So let's open this up. Delete those. And then we're going to drop everything back in here again. Open it, make sure everything is there. CW mods under meshes, CW mods under textures. Okay. All right. That all looks good. Now back to mod manager. Now, just to be on the safe side, and I would recommend doing this, it I I just I like to delete the original mod completely to make sure there's no record of it anywhere that could potentially screw things up. So I'm going to disable it. And uh, I'm going to delete it. Okay. Then I'm going to reinstall it. Reactivate it. Now, obviously, your procedure is going to be a little bit different if you're using legacy and you're using um, Mod Organizer. Your process is a little bit different. Um, honestly, I really prefer modding with Mod Organizer. That's my personal preference. But there just really isn't anything that I feel is reliable enough right now for Special Edition. There's a lot of people who are using Mod Organizer 2 for Special Edition. Um, if I wasn't running a story or something like that, I might consider doing that myself. But I've got, I've got a bit more riding on this. You know, if something gets screwed up, my whole story is screwed up. Um, and there are a lot of people who are let down. It's not just my game that's affected. It's everybody who's viewing the story. So I kind of stay away from anything like that that I perceive as risky. But Mod Organizer has some features in it that make it really nice for modding. Uh, in particular, it's got an overwrite folder, which is really cool. So when you uh, create a new ESP file, for example, or you resave or save some new data into an existing ESP file, it puts it into the overwrite folder. And then um, that way, when you're, you're making those saves, you're not overwriting the ESP that is in your data folder. Uh, it's kind of held back in reserve. And then uh, if, you're, if you're happy with the end results, you can move it over and kind of manually take that step of replacing that ESP file, uh, which I really like. It also allows you to have ESP files in the overwrite folder and be sure that those are the last things that are loading. So um, you, you kind of have this extra level of assurance that what you're testing is the actual mod and not some other version of the mod or some stray file or stuff like that. It, to me, there, there's just there's some, some nice things there, I think, which make modding really, really nice and convenient. It was difficult for me to learn at first, but once I figured out how it worked, then it was, it was a pretty, I thought it was a pretty sweet deal. But So the procedure is just a little bit different with... Um, Nexus Mod Manager, the principles are the same, but some of the features of the mod organizing tool are a bit different. So that has an impact on how your work process goes. Yes, Fokakta, that is a technical term. All right. If you want information on using um, Mod Organizer 2, Dirty Weasel has some good stuff out there. How to get it set up and, and working and all that stuff. He uses it extensively. I do not, but he's a good resource for that. Okay, so let's go have a look now. This should make a, a big difference, I would think. All right, so... Now, the important thing is, what I'm hoping is when I click select here, yes, we got our hat, and we edit. Now, I can come down here to CW Mods. There we go. Close, farm close, hat. 
All right. Good deal. Now, what I want to see is when I load that guy up, I want to see that texture on there, and, and that is what we're getting. All right. All right. Uh, technically, this is Vander's hat, so it's going to be male only, so we can remove this reference if it will let us. Maybe it won't let us. I won't screw with it then. We'll just leave it. Okay. Okay. So let me think here. Anything else? Um, I'm thinking there's got to be another reference here. Farm hat 02. Yeah, we need this file also. Let's open this up real quick and just confirm. You can see there's a, a model here. Edit. Yeah, that is also that cap. Okay, yeah, we are going to need a second file. Even though it's a piece of clothing, I guess it does have an armor file too, now that I'm thinking about it. Because I, I thought, hey, there's some key information missing here. Like, how do we give it a unique name that would allow us to find it? So we're going to need this file also. I apologize for that, but you're going to need that, okay? So I'm going to duplicate this one as well. Honestly, I sort of feel like... Um, Creating armor is a little easier <laughs> because things are more obviously named. Okay. Uh, what do we call it? Sprint cap. Same procedure as before. We select no and then yes. All right. Now we should have everything we need. Okay, cool. CW mod sprint cap, CW mod sprint cap AA. Now, let's go in this one. This is our new file. This, this is where we get to give it a name, okay? So we're going to call it Vander's sprint cap. Um, I think the value is fine. I can leave that at default. I'll leave the weight at default, all this stuff. None of this stuff here has to change, okay? Um, let's see. This, what is this file? Let's look. Okay, hat GND. This is basically, this is a special model for what the hat would look like if it was lying on the ground. So if you took the hat out of your inventory and dropped it on the ground, what would it look like? All right. I'm thinking I'm not going to worry about that, really. At least right, not right now. So let's set it back to how it was. I'll leave that for now. Okay. Uh, armor type is clothing, covers the head. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate this. We don't want this to be a vendor item, okay? We don't want it sold by any vendors. It's one of a kind, so we're going to remove that. Now, the other thing that we need to do then is we need to map our armor file to the right AA file here, so we're going to delete this one, select new, we're going to come over here and go CW mod, select the right armor add-on file, all right, now we've got the two linked up, that should do the trick. Now if we wanted to, we can see the path here, close, farm close 02, M, mail hat, GND, right? We could go and find that, and we could also drop in 
uh, and create a custom mapped uh, mesh there to include that as well. <sighs> I wonder if we should. I mean, we're already in here. We know what the file path is going to be, right? We could do that. Although creating the file path here doesn't work unless I have an object to link to, which means we got to shut everything down, set that up, and fire it up again and connect it all up, which is sort of a pain in the butt. Let's go ahead and save this. That is one thing with Creation Kit save often. You know, especially if you're doing something like creating an NPC where there's a lot of steps. Uh, maybe you get a third of the way through. Just shut down all the dialogues and do a save and open back up and continue. It's, you know, you're going to be glad you did because this thing will crash on you unexpectedly. You just never know when. Okay. All right. So we've got our updates made. Let's close this down. Now we've got something that we can actually test in game. Okay. But before we do that, this is now a brand spanking new ESP file. You can see the timestamp on it is 6.55 p.m. It is 6.55 p.m. right now. So this is the brand spanking new ESP file. The ESP file that is in the, the install package we made is the old one. So let's play it safe and make sure we go back and, and overwrite that thing. Let's replace it. Okay. We may as well also drop the new one into our install package so we know our install package is up to date. Okay, that's all good. Now, let's test it in game. So I'm going to open this up. All right. Now this. That's the old one. Okay, this is the one that we, we created tonight. This one here, CW Mod Sprint Cap, this is the install package that we created two weeks ago when we made the texture. We can now disable this. So I'm going to disable it because we've now put the texture inside this new one alongside its mesh, right? So this should be all good to go, standalone by itself. Um, this one here was the replacer, and this one is the unique item version. All right, so we can disable that old one. Otherwise, we'll just have multiple copies of the same texture out there, and that's a waste of resources. And by having that one loaded, we would still be using our fancy texture as the default, which we don't want. All right, so let's fire it up now. Everybody still awake out there? I know this is scintillating stuff. Really amazing. Essentially what we're doing is we're we're finding assets in Creation Kit that are similar to what we need and we're duplicating them and then changing their properties. That's what we're doing. Okay. Where are you, Vander? Right there. All right, let's find a good spot. Wink and Skiva. We'll go there. All right, here we go. Now, if we did our job correctly, we should see a sprint cap in his inventory, but it is going to be the old school farmhand style sprint cap because we were using the replacer, right? So let's have a look. Hopefully we did it right. Yeah, okay. See, it doesn't have our custom texture on it. This is just a regular old farm hat now, okay? Now what we need to do to test this is we are going to bring in our own sprint cap. This also, by the way, is that mesh we were talking about, the, the uh, GND or ground mesh. That's kind of what that looks like in game. That's the same thing that you would see if you threw it on the ground, right? All right. So we're going to go get the real hat now.
Let's remove help. I'll just put in Vander's. There we can see it. Vander's sprint cap. It's been assigned an ID when the game loaded. All right, so let's do player dot add item six d zero zero one two c three. We only need one of those. Okay. Peril. Now it's called Vander's sprint cap. That's the name that we gave it in the armor file. Now look at this, right? You can see it doesn't have the right texture on here, but that's because we didn't do that whole ground mesh replacer thing, right? So it's still using the old default model and texture for this version of it. But if we put it on his head and we equip it, it should look right. And it does. Okay, we can see it's got his little rift and logos on the side. There you go. Now it's completely unique. So if we go around Skyrim and we check out some other farmers or people here, they're not going to have that same hat on, which is what we wanted. Okay. Now let's check this crazy dude out, right? He's got a hat on that's not identical to ours. He's got the regular old farmer's hat on. Okay. Now in the replacer model, he would have had a hat identical to ours, but now we've got a unique one, so we're good to go. Now the cool thing is that once you've established this, once you've got it all set, then you're good to go. Now we can go back and we can make tweaks to the textures, we can go and change the properties, we could go into Creation Kit and make it enchanted, and all of those all of those changes would just require us to update the ESP file or just drag and drop an updated texture in to replace the existing one. But all the infrastructure essentially has been established in order for this mod to work and to be installed and maintained properly. So now it's just that much easier for us to modify it going forward. Okay? Make sense? All right. Now, in my particular case, Jay, I needed to go through the menu because I wanted people to see what was in the menu, but he is correct. So there you have it. We've created a unique item. Now this is um, a pretty uncomplicated one, but this is essentially uh, what I have done to create Vander's armor, okay? So the, the armor started out with the standard Letho armor, but in order to make sure that I'm creating, like I can take, I could basically take armor from any mod and I could make it unique. I would just use that mod as a resource when I installed or when I opened up Creation Kit. I would select it as a resource. I'd pull the items into Creation Kit that I needed to work with and create unique versions of them. Then I'd also create unique meshes, create unique textures, and remap everything. Uh, it's not complicated. It's basically what we just got done doing, but on a slightly larger scale. Um, it's just time consuming. That's what it is. It's just time consuming. It's a lot of fussing around because you got to get in there and duplicate everything and make these paths and change all the NIFs and stuff like that. But you could do it for a full set of armor, full set of gear, and have your, your character use something that is a variant of what's available in the game that no one else uses. And I, I really like that. I think it helps a character to kind of stand out. It also means that you can do some other unique things. You could put unique enchantments on things. I also like the idea that a piece of armor could go from being a generic piece of armor, leather armor, you know, to being Vander's leather armor. Because we can label that, of course, in the mod files, and any name that we give it shows up inside inside our menus and all that kind of stuff. So it's a way that you, you can personalize uh, the character's gear as well, make it specific to them. All right, now, 
Does anybody have any questions about that? Anything at all? Okay. Um, it's pretty basic stuff. Now I'm thinking about... Uh, let, let's just take a moment here. I'm going to take a break here pretty quick, and then we're going to come back for some game time. But before we do that, I'd like to give this group an opportunity to uh, chime in. Uh, is what, what would you like to cover next? We've got another one of these sessions in two weeks, and there's so many different topics that we could cover. Uh, does anybody have any particular suggestions for things that you would like to cover? And And it can be you know, console command stuff, it can be game stuff, it can be creation kit stuff, it can be story related, it it can be about, you know, story design, it could be uh, Photoshop, it could be video production, it could be audio production, it could be any of that stuff, okay? Cell edits, um, how so? Like just taking a cell and making a change to it? Like... Changing an interior cell, you mean? Something like that? I'm going to assume that's what you're talking about. Yeah, we could definitely go over stuff like that. Yeah, cell, cell editing is basically, well, like the inside of the winking skeever is a cell, right? So... You can, go, you can go inside a cell and you could remove all the furniture or move the furniture around or uh, you could change um, the nav mesh inside there, right? That, that's something that we had to do when uh, Joe and I created the House of Troubles. Um, he worked on the interior while I worked on the exterior and then nav mesh, all that kind of stuff, um, get all the, the items, objects arranged and then set up all kind of fun and interesting stuff. We're going to do with Vander, uh, having to do with a custom mod that I created. We'll probably talk about mods a bit more. So thank you all very much. I will see you back here soon.